we're in a world where it's like do do create and it's like well not everybody is built that way some of us move a bit slower we're a bit more fragile we need time you know to just just kind of life can be tough so I don't think there's one mold for one person and you've got to be okay. I mean, I'm clearly a turtle. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of years between albums, but turtles win the race. So, you know, it's not about the amount that you do. It's just about the care that you take with what you do. What did your day actually look like when, when you were trying to work through from the lowest moments, what was the discipline to help you build back that creative confidence? Um, to just the act of, of scheduling things in that you have to show up for. Um, I tried a lot of different kinds of things to get myself able to walk into the room. <laughs> Mine was that bad. Um, I tried a lot of different modalities just to kind of not be terrified to kind of turn up to a writing session. Um, all of which were tools to just kind of trick my brain and, and get myself in the room. But more than anything, I think going to Nashville and booking 10 days straight songwriting, which is like two sessions a day, um, hardcore. And I'd, been, I'd, I'd written in Nashville on my first album. In fact, the song Smoke was written under a tree with a guy called Matt Bronley in Nashville. So I was aware of, of the intensity of songwriting there. And I just had this intuitive feeling that if I went there, it was gonna help me overcome my writer's block and that's what I did. So I just song wrote, you know, with a bunch of people that, some that I'd met before, some I was meeting for the first time. And it was hard. Because at the beginning of that, I was just going along with everyone else's ideas and going, yeah, that sounds great. And it's nothing I would say, wasn't me. And then I'd wonder why I didn't like the song or I'd be crying. I'm like, oh, it's just so not me. And, but finishing off the day, not speaking up. So a lot of it was also learning, you know, if I, if I don't have the courage to say, well, I wouldn't actually say that. That's not who I am then I'm not going to be happy with the song because they're trying to help me. And if there's no me in the room, then how are they going to help me write the song? So I think some of what I learned was the courage to just take control of the narrative and uh, shut things down if it doesn't feel like it's me. And th that's okay. That doesn't mean, you know, you don't want to offend people. And in a creative room, you have to be really careful. But my experience has been that collaborators love it if you're like, that's not me. So what is you? And you're like, that's me. You know, and that's a really helpful, useful thing in, in a writing session. So it's welcome. Um, I guess I'd just forgotten how to do it. I think it's gonna be really helpful for a lot of our listeners to hear that you work through confidence challenges. And if you could speak directly to somebody who's who's struggling with their confidence, what would you say to them? I would say you're not the thoughts in your head. They're just thoughts. And you can make up new ones. You can, you, the mind, do something with your hands. Go outside, walk, exercise. The thing is, the mind's nature is to turn in on itself. And if you just let it run away with itself, it'll drive you mad. So it, this is a work in progress. This is not something you just overcome. You have to find tools, whether it's meditation, whether it's, you know, writing down negative thought patterns and creating more positive ones, like whatever you need to do um, to recognize you're just spiraling. And we do it all the time and it is a practice. And so I have to even myself catch myself being really negative about things and, um, it also depends on how you were brought up. Were you a glass half empty family? Were you a glass half full family? Like, what's your coping strategies in life? You know, do you catastrophize? Like, I, I my mother did that. So I often, I have to fight against going, oh my God, it's gonna be a disaster, <laughs> you know? So 
I also got my discipline from my mother, though. So she, there was a lot of good that I got from from the strength of my mum. But you know, it's just finding ways to work with the mind. The mind can can be a great help um, if you can figure out ways to stop it taking over. <laughs> what was your intention with Firebird? I didn't have a genre, a style of music. I just knew that. I needed, I had stories I needed to tell, and each song is its own universe. And I don't want to limit myself to one style of song. I love country, when you love too much. You know, I like the vibe of Dive to the Deep. Then you've got, there's so many different kinds of songs. You've got Maybe It's Great with Albert Hammond Jr. Um, Nothing Missing, a bit more rocky. I mean, the songs are so varied. Um, so I didn't want to limit myself to that. So for me, it was just telling the truth. And the story was the, the, the start of it. And then the hard part is tying that together at the end of it. But there's about five songs that aren't on the album. Because I'm still old school. I still make an arc with, with my album. And there's songs that thematically didn't make sense because the subject matter was way off. And I was like, I can't. And you know, you're doing your track listing and I'm like, it doesn't fit. It doesn't roll off the back of any song because like there's no home for it here. Um, and I love that side of it. To me, that's like, um, I know that the, the, the modern wave of music now is just put a song out a month or whatever, but I still approach it old school. Because I enjoy it. It's interesting when you say that. When I, I, I listened to the album last night and found myself getting like kind of pulled into it, and I feel like that was almost the way it was when I listened to albums growing up. Like you'd, you'd sit down and put on the first track, and you'd kind of just find yourself getting pulled through. And and I don't know if I have that same experience the same way nowadays. So maybe that's what you mean by, mean by old school and this kind of arc to an album that just kind of pulls you through with a story or a feeling or something. Oh, I, I I remember sweating when it's time to do the track listing. It's so important to me. And I cut them all out, kind of David Bowie-esque, all the titles and like the number down the side and I rearrange them. And then I listen to them, how they flow into each other. I mean, that to all of those, the detail of all of that, I just love it. I live for it because I want the listener to have that experience. If it's working for me, I hope that it's going to work for them. You mentioned early your uh, kind of interest in spirituality, learning mm -hmm. in that regard. What have been your big discoveries throughout your journey? Like, what are the universal truths that feel like I now know that to be true? Um, I'm not what I do. Like, who I am is not what I do. I'm not the voice in my head. It's just like the basics. <laughs> um, which for some people, they can't even wrap their head around that. So, you know, that's a big one. Um, if you're not using those tools, then you're going to have, you know, like I haven't had a proper meditation practice in a while and it kind of shows <laughs> a bit scatty. I'm going to blame that on being a new parent. But, you know, I know that the periods of my life where that practice is in place, um, everything's a bit easier. Um, we're all connected, you know, I think that's the truth which even that one some people struggle with. Uh, but that's my personal belief. I think that makes everything easier to wrap my head around that one. Um, yeah, mainly just, just the basic meditation thing. It's just been a great tool. And just the discovery that comes from being alone with yourself and really kind of searching that internal landscape. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be doing the Guru Gita for an hour and a half every day like I was. I mean, I went hardcore. I did a month silence once, which is hard for me, let me tell you. <laughs> Natalie, what's the legacy you hope to leave behind? Oh my goodness. Uh, that's just such a big word. Legacy. I, I don't know. I mean... I'd like just to be known for someone who was wholly who they are and, you know, 
honest in their truth about it through my art, I could say. That would be nice. And what's next? You've got Firebirds coming. It's, it's, it's here. It's fantastic. Well, the Turtles are trying to put out an album in less than three years after this one. But we're not holding out much hope. But that's the plan. I've, I've, I've got the five tracks I told you about. It would be great that I could tour this album next year. Beyond that, I, I, I really don't plan too much, but I'd love to tour this album for as long as is possible and, um, and get some new music out <laughs> in less than three years. Okay. Hopefully we can convince you to come to Canada. Oh my gosh, I would love. Canada's great. I've spent time in Canada. Mm-hmm.